Hey, what's up guys? Uh, so, thank you for sticking with me through the first uh, very boring um, <laughs> um, part of the tutorial and um, welcome to our second part. Now in our second part, and sorry for the mess here, I got tangled up with uh, some of the equipment here. So anyway, um, so yeah, so in our second um, tutorial um, what we're gonna do is that we're gonna look at some of the um, technology in terms of software uh, that you're going to use in order to code and get your application uh, kick-started um, there are certain tools that you're going to need and they're all available online they're all free to download you don't have to spend a penny to get any of this stuff um, there are a lot of more applications out there that if you wish to pay for they're more than welcome to do so but I've personally found that there isn't really a need for it so um, there's um, first thing that you're going to need which is going to be an IDE uh, Forgive me for not ex remembering exactly what an IDE really means. I know what it is. I just don't know what the acronym really means. Uh, uh, I mean, I, I know a simple Google will, will, will cover that, and I could, you know, uh, and I could know what it is by just Googling it. But um, honestly, I'm not really that interested. <laughs> um, you know, that no one is going to test you. Uh, you know, in 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 a in, in a college class or something like that to to know what an ID means or you won't get a job okay as long as you know what it is you're fine so what is an ID uh, an IDE is basically a tool that you use in order to code in several languages uh, not all IDEs um, can support every language um, but I have found that in today's competition between all of them they have all come to a point where they all kind of um, support at least the most common languages out there. Um, they all support HTML for sure and CSS and JavaScript. Um, some of them are a little bit more geared towards PHP. Some of them are more geared towards um, um, Java and C++ and all of these object-oriented programming languages. Um, some of them are geared towards uh, front-end uh, frameworks and front-end uh, front-end development uh, languages. So again, it's it's all really a matter of what you feel comfortable with. <clears throat> um, some of the names that you're going to um, hear in, in your in the professional world in relation to IDEs are going to be, and I'm going to check some out here. Um, Sublime um, editor, I think it is uh, Sublime Text. Yeah, Sublime Text. So Sublime Text is one of the IDEs that you can use. I have it downloaded. It's in my system, and I use it for other things. I don't use it as my primary IDE, not uh, you know to code. I do use it to check code, um, te uh, you know, or pieces of code or something like that. Um, from other resources that I, I, I find online and they ask me to check it out and then I can open it right on the in, in Sublime without having to um, affect the application that I am actually working with in another IDE so that's one that you can use and if you if you want to know a little bit more about Sublime you can just you know um, Google it up just like I did and then make sure the Sublime text dot com right here and then you'll be able to download it for Windows if you're using Windows or download it for Mac if it's um, if you're using a Mac it is available for Mac as well and it is a very easy um, UI and a very easy um, application and very easy tool uh, to run and you can use extensions and different um, applicate different uh, tools that it comes within the IDE to help you along the way so that's one of them. Another one that is very common is Atom. And I think that is going to be Atom IO. That's right. So Atom is another one that is pretty cool and I actually used it for a very long time. It was my primary um software or or tool, IDE tool for a very long time. And again, they have it available for Windows, they have it available for Mac as well. And I stopped using it um not because 
it was a bad thing to use and had to change or anything like that but because the environment that I was working with was using um, um, a different IDE at the time uh, Visual Studio so I decided to just kinda go along with the framework and go along with what everybody else is using and then you know stick to what everybody else is, uh, is having alright so the other one is going to be part of the uh, storm um, family and when I mean storm family I mean they have you know the web storm I think they call it J is by JetBrains actually let's just look up JetBrains because they are the, the parent of um, of all these uh, storm packages okay so JetBrain is one that you're going to see um used in a, a lot of high end or high level actually um software companies and they these are not free i mean some of them are free to some extent but they're not platforms that you really will be using for um for a lot of development but uh, the ones that you need to use um you'll have to buy them and some of the tools that they have in in their entire family you're gonna have PHP storm and PyCharm if you develop with Python uh, or if you use Ruby and Rails you can you, you're gonna use RubyMine WebStorm which is the one that most of us would probably use in front end and Intel J which I believe is used a lot more for JavaScript and C++ and things like that so they have a bunch of different ones that you can use depending on the language that you want to use and they're not incredibly expensive I don't know if they have the prices here um, but I don't want to spend too much time on this if you want to do some um, some of your own um, um, research on which one will be better for you you're more than welcome to check all these websites out and test them all out to see which one you feel more comfortable with at the end of the day I really don't believe that one is better than the other I think I believe it's just all a matter of preference on what you feel comfortable with I do think that anything in the family of chip brains is going to be a little bit more a little bit harder to use a little bit more complicated because the UI is packed up with so much um, and it's so convoluted sometimes that it, it could actually become overkill for what you're doing but so this will be my least preferred but again that's the keyword prefer right it's my least preferred one so it's a, it's a matter of preference um, if you check here on on the languages that you're going to be using it would actually recommend which one you should use okay um, another one that you will see a lot is Notepad++. Notepad++ is, to me, the weakest of all of them. It's so, 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 so simple. Um, I would recommend having Notepad++ just like for the same reasons that I use Sublime, you know, to check on somebody else's code or to um, to write a piece of code that you know that you don't need to debug much and that you just need to write real quick and and then pass it along to somebody you know something like that um, test maybe some things um, but uh, notepad plus plus is not really one of the highest players in the game although some people may disagree um, I don't really think that they're at least not for me again like I said earlier it's all about preference and eh, not really I don't prefer it. <laughs> All right, so now let's talk about the one that we are actually going to use in the code along here, and which one, and, and the one that I use. Okay, Visual Studio Code. So this is the one that I'm actually going to talk about. This is the one that I use, and this is the one that, we, that you're going to see me using in the application. And in, and if you're going to use it, um, then great because I'm going to give you some insight on how to use Visual Studio Code. So where did Visual Studio, Visual, Visual Studio come from? Um, it came from its parent, Visual Studio. Visual Studio is a way larger platform than this IDE, and it was and it's made for to do a lot more, you know, many more things than Visual Studio Code uh, does. But for the terms of front-end development, Visual Studio Code is actually better because it's, it's, it's slimmed down, it's smaller, and 
you don't need to have all the bells and whistles that you're probably not ever gonna need it ever so um this is gonna be plenty this is gonna be more than enough um and it, it doesn't create projects for you when you use it you can you can use it synchronously um right off the IDE and as opposed to Visual Studio or even uh, any of the JetBrains uh, family that when you actually develop in it you need to build it as a project into a project folder and that creates sometimes issues when it's time to push or when it's time to build your, your application and push it to a server because you don't know exactly whether some things should be in the project folder or outside of the project folder it of course there is a way to do it and it's not really that hard but it could be confusing for you guys since you guys are starting so um, let's just um, not do that and continue with the Visual Studio Code which is not going to allow allow you to do uh, projects for your application so you can download it for Windows or Mac or even Linux uh, as you can see here you pick your right operating system download it there's nothing to do in the configurations so you just continue downloading it until it runs now what happens after the runs you're gonna get something like this there are different ways that you can set up in the in the wheel cog here you can set up your color theme and some people like the light um, background some people like the dark default background I do I like the dark default but the room that I am in has a lot of back glare so I don't really use it I prefer using um, the light default instead so um for the light default uh, I mean I'm sorry not for Visual Studio now when when you start coding in Visual Studio you don't need to have um, you, you will need to have some extensions that it will just only help you get your your code uh, cleaner and faster um, it'll, it'll make you do things a lot faster because it has a lot of shortcuts and implementations to it so if you click on this um, box here you can you gonna see a, a search box where you can search and then you once you search for the name of the plugin that you need you're gonna see it here sometimes you're gonna have these re recommended lists right here <clears throat> if you see the one that you need to use is already here in the recommendations you click install or you can click on it and read a little bit a little bit about it and know what they have or what it's for and see if you actually even need it but we're not gonna go over the recommended we're gonna go over the enabled here because these are the ones that I have um, downloaded in my system in my platform and uh, I think you're gonna get to use a lot of these so I'm going to recommend some of these myself I'm not gonna recommend all of them and I'm not gonna go over all of them because some of them like this one for example is for angular development and we're not gonna cover angular right now and future um, tutorials where I'm going to be doing an angular tutorial and other kinds of tutorials then I may recommend for you to download this but uh, to install it but for right now don't worry about it so first one we're gonna talk about is gonna be the auto close tag so it basically does exactly what it says when you type a tag in HTML without having to write the end tag it does it for you it automatically does it for you and that is an amazing tool and it's and it would be very helpful for you to have this um, many of the problems that I have seen in the past where people get uh, you know some HTML that is not working is that people don't close the tag they open and if you don't open if you don't close the tag that you open that open tag is going to continue to trickle down through your code because your code doesn't know when it stops so if if you have a tag that is supposed to do certain things and um, and I'll, I'll show you briefly what it means here so if I had here and I'll turn this into HTML so I can show you and so it can actually work so if I have something like that this is a simple scale document in HTML so say for example I have um, a UL tag like that that is closed and inside of my UL tag I'm gonna have an LI tag which is a, a list item all this does is this right here
it's a list item it's a bullet tag right if I want to put an oops sorry an order list item then it would just give me you know an order list and you, you guys seen this before right alright so what if I have an order list item and my list item here has a class uh, it has a class of um, red for example in the CSS I have instructed the CSS to make um, the red class paint something in red if I don't close this if I forget and I start writing you know another paragraph here notice how it didn't close it something went wrong the HTML is not closing my p tag because it doesn't recognize something it, it recognizes something went wrong right so that is your first indication but if I wanted to write something there and I closed it by myself force the closing and I continue on to do something else or whatever this tag right here or this paragraph here which I expected it to be somewhere down the line here and I want it to be as all my paragraphs you know just black with 14 pixels of uh, size font size or whatever may actually turn red when I say may is because I'm not exactly sure because I, I'm, I will have to actually run this error in order to see it happening but in my prediction based on my experience I am 99% sure that if you attach the red class up here that is not attached that is not specifically made for allies but it's just a regular simple class with a color in it because you left this open here I mean sorry this OL open here and then the P tag is continuing down here the code is looking for a place where it can close actually you know what this makes more sense here yeah there we go if you don't close this li tag this applic this um, property that you apply to the li will continue to trickle into the into the paragraph that's exactly what I mean what, what I meant to say so yeah so in other words I mean I know this was a little bit confusing you don't have to type any of this and this I know this won't probably make a whole lot of sense so don't worry about that I just wanted to show you and I wanted to stress how important it is to um, be able to close all your tags at all time but to avoid all these problems with closing your tags you, you can just uh, install this auto close tag and it would automatically do it for you just like I did here if I type um, a UL tag it would automatically close see that it closed it automatically another thing that comes with Visual Studio that is kinda neat and it comes you don't have to download anything is called Emmet and what Emmet does is allows you to code without having to actually cr write in HTML so instead of writing UL and close it it actually does the same thing by just writing UL and hit enter and it does it for you as well however I know it's available and if you feel comfortable digging you know using it that way okay but I don't recommend it since you're learning I would prefer if you and it would be more beneficial for you if you actually wrote in HTML that way you get used to the um, writing you used to how you used to write in HTML and used to know how the HTML language is comprised and the syntax and all that so don't get too dependent on that kind of stuff so the next one I want to talk about is the auto rename tag the auto rename tag it does exactly what it says it renames the tag that you initially thought that you know you didn't need to use so say for example I have an h1 tag here which it just gives me a huge heading that says welcome on the top and I, th and I thought oh you know what well, maybe an H1 is too large I want to use something smaller no big deal <clears throat> I can use two and it automatically renames the ending tag this comes very helpful when you have a lot of code and you don't know where it opened and when it closed so you can just simply come over here and rename the, the the opening tag and if you look down here it already opened it so you don't have to write any of this again this is just to help to to help you visualize what I'm what's going on 
so that's done with auto rename tag and again all you have to do is click on the enable on the install I showed you earlier where it was click on the install and it will run sometimes Visual Studio will ask you to update your um, you know your, your IDE once you install something don't worry about it just keep installing and then do an, uh, do a refresh uh, basically reload close your application open it again and then everything will be working the next one is going to be the bracket pair colorizer so the bracket pair colorizer helps you understand where your bracket open and where your bracket will close this probably won't make a whole lot of sense in HTML and CSS but it will make a lot of sense in um, JavaScript so just to kind of show you I don't know if I have a JavaScript file here maybe I do maybe I don't I'll create one so if I create a main JS file here just to show you what I mean and say for example I have um, um, a console log this is JavaScript language so don't worry about this because we're not gonna touch this in for a while and then in here you notice those brackets are yellow now but if in there I actually wanna run an object I can put this object here name equals um, name equals Lewis okay so you notice now how this right here is you know what I think you probably can see this very well and I apologize for that I'm going to fix that right now there we go you can see it better now so you notice how this right here is in yellow and then these are in purple okay if for some reason I wanted to go back in there and then do another another one um, and then call it something like that okay I know this is an error but I'm not worrying about this right now don't worry about the error all I want you to see is how the bracket color changes it went from yellow to purple to blue there's a point for this when you have complex JavaScript written it's gonna be really hard to find out where your opening and your closing bracket is and just to kind of show you what I mean I'm gonna open an actual code that I'm working on to show you what I mean so if I go to something like this here hopefully something else hopefully something a little bit more convoluted um, give me one second here alright well this is this is good enough so you notice how I have some brackets in a certain color here and and then I have these colors right here and then I have this color here so this helps you understand which is which this right here if you notice is this one here and this is the closing one for this one here so if you wanted to put something inside of this function and you don't know exactly where to put it whether you should put it here or here where to put it but all you know is that you know it has to be inside of this function because of the color you can tell that this color this bracket closes here then you can just select uh, you know hit enter to create some space and then do your your code in there and it will run inside of this function so I'm gonna leave this alone because I don't want this to give me any problems <laughs> so so that just gives you an idea what the bracket colorizer does Oops. hopefully you didn't hear that big chime that just rang on my ear okay so uh, going back along here uh, all right so where were we so we were on bracket prayer colorizer so yeah install it it will make a you know it will be very helpful later not so much right now for HTML CSS but it will be very helpful later for JavaScript uh, now colorize this would actually will help a lot in in CSS when whenever you type a hex key such as this one or an RGB color key like this one right here it would actually color it in the color that you code it 
so that will give you a better representation of where your code is and you know how or, or what what your what your color is supposed to be and where to find it. So this right here, for example, you notice that I just put this this right here without the without the red visualization, I wouldn't be able to know what color it is because no one can remember by heart all of these hex keys. I mean, you know the basic ones. You know that this is white. Zero 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 is black, and there will be other ones that people will remember like CCC. But when it gets to colors like this that you can change into anything, it's um, it's really hard to remember. So when you get to pick your color with the colorizer here, and you find it in there, and you find it and you put it in here. If you need to download, if you need to, I'm sorry, if you need to debug your application and find a red or a blue background somewhere that is not correct, you kind of can find it like that by just scrolling down your CSS and you'll be able to see it. So put that back where it was. Okay, so moving along. CSS Peak. CSS Peak is, um, it's not something that I actually use a whole lot but but some people do and basically what it does is it allows you from the HTML to be able to um, attach a class to it but because it, it already it reads through your through the CSS that you have downloaded in your system and it will automatically find it what you need you know find it the, the classes that you need that you have available for you so if I have this right here and I want to write a class for it that is going to use uh, a class of um, navigation right a navigation class it already found that my styles CSS has these classes here these three up here these three classes here this stuff right here is for angular don't worry about that stuff it has these three classes here that I can use I will probably end up using navback collapse maybe I wanted to use nav item even though it wouldn't make sense for this particular element but maybe that's what I wanted to what if I wanted to um it, okay so here's another example what if I wanted to make it white well guess what nothing came up now and the reason why is because the white class doesn't exist that's why it didn't come up but if you if you used um something um I don't think I have anything that is actually white in there but like I said earlier if you if you wanted to use um, a highlight uh, class for example it will be there because it exists so the easiest way to do that is uh, you know to make it available for you is obviously to have it um, included in your CSS first so it's available for you from your CSS peak inside of your HTML so hopefully that makes sense alright so moving along here um, we have don't worry about this and don't worry about this and HTML CSS support this is something that I think it came already out of the out of the box with um, with Visual Studio but if it didn't I recommend you download it it will give you access to HTML5 um, uh, recognized elements and CSS support as well that way when you actually write something in HTML5 it you know Visual Studio knows that it is a um, a good uh, tag to use it's, it's legit <laughs> um, HTML snippet kinda does the same thing so you just wanna make sure that you download those two if it didn't come automatically with it but this one is specifically for HTML5 um, for JavaScript I would say go ahead and download it for now uh, even though you're not gonna use it at the at this stage of the application, but eventually once we start writing in JavaScript, you will. So um, you can go ahead and write it for now. I mean, um, install it for now if you want to make sure that it's uh, ES6 because we're going to be writing JavaScript in the ES6 module, which is the the modern JavaScript as they call it, and most likely what you're going to use by the time you actually hit, um, go on and get a job in in front end development life size compiler go ahead and, and install this we will be using this eventually this allows you to write in SAS or SCSS and and I will explain what SCSS means but I'm not gonna spend too much time on that we'll do this eventually when we get that far now the live server 
um, what it does is now the live server what it does is it it makes it, it helps you um, put your application on the browser basically it, it, it projects or it serves it serves your application on the browser so you can see what you are developing and then everything that you do on the HTML or CSS it only works for HTML and CSS everything that you do on HTML and CSS when um, you make any changes to it it automatically reloads and updates your UI on the browser so that way you don't have to click the you know continue clicking that um, reload icon on 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 the browser in order to do it so it makes things a little faster and a little easier for you to see and have a instant uh, feedback on what you're writing and you'll know whether you're going right or wrong and I will explain how to use the live server um, a little bit more in detail but it it does explain it here pretty well you will have this at the bottom here if you notice mine says port 5500 and that means I am already deploying this application that I have open here this I'm already deploying this on the browser um, in fact I probably could I probably should show you what so here's my application that is running on port 12711 which is localhost port 5500 so if you notice here it's on 5500 so I'm gonna go ahead and make this a uh, little smaller so you can see the changes as I make them so basically what LiveSaver does is if I go to my index because I am in my index one here and I find this cardio training here which is here in these boxes and and I make a cardio workouts and I rename it as soon as I click control save for saving you see how it changed here okay and that will happen to this it would also happen to the HTML as well so if I wanted to actually use something a little bit smaller than the NH3 say I wanted to use an H5 instead you notice how the closing H5 also changed all thanks for all thanks to the auto name tag and I save you notice how this changed to an H5 which is a smaller one so <clears throat> I'm gonna put that back where it was and there you go so that's how you use the live server so definitely I recommend it alright so where were we here um, there are some other things that you can download themes like icon themes right here which you will be able to see here you see these little icons on the side next to the name this is for JavaScript this is for CSS this one is for HTML so you could use things like that and and if you don't like the way that um, Visual Studio looks out of the box there are themes and theme kits that you can use that make your colors um, and the UI a little different um, this one is one that I use a lot material and material night which is a lighter version um, so yeah I do use this one a lot and uh, you can choose once you have it installed by clicking over here and just like I did earlier you go to color theme and if I want to use material I can click on material and you notice how all my code now is written in this kind of color and it just looks a little better I think so so it's pretty cool so you don't have to stick to what you see and you know what you get out of the box you know you can change your stuff and make it look differently if you want to I have some other ones here I'm not gonna go over like Monokai Pro um, that's this one um, dark for Adam or looks like Adam like that okay so um, another ones that I want to touch real quick is eventually at the end of this application we're gonna add some PHP code to this application and the only reason why I want to do this is because since it's not going to use a JavaScript framework um, to manage views uh, and, and I think it's important that you know how to manage views so that you're not doing a lot of um, uh, repeating yourself and then you're able to use um, 
uh, you'll be able to build in, in the dry concept. The dry concept means don't repeat yourself. So in order for that to work, you'll be able. You, you're gonna need to um, run this PHP IntelliSense and the PHP server. So just go to PHP IntelliSense and install that, and then go to the PHP server and also install that. By the time we get that far, you're not gonna be using the live server that I talked about earlier anymore. We're gonna be in, we're gonna be then using the PHP server, okay? And then the pretty prettier. I have the hardest time saying this word, <laughs> prettier. So what prettier does is that it it um, not I wouldn't say go compile, but it it uh, what's the word I'm looking for? It reorganizes your code so it doesn't look all messy. So if I use that and then I and then I do this with it, you know something like this uh, can write and then I actually put um, an icon in here as well if I F A plus whatever doesn't matter which one I use. So if I did something like this, right? It's a lot faster to write it like that than having to indent manually. So I can just write it all in one line, and as soon as I hit save, which is gonna ask me to save it, but I don't want to save it. So I'm gonna save it to my desktop. So as soon as I hit save, you see what it does. It basically restructured my application, um, my code, and organized it in a very pretty way so that you can find where your code starts and where it ends. Right? This indentation here is very important, okay? And I, I listen, guys, I have managed teams of developers and fr front end development, and nothing makes me. <laughs> more upset than seeing code that is not properly indented uh, or not properly organized okay code is hard enough as it is coding is enough it's hard enough as it is and it's a uh, if you're not going to organize it the right way you're just gonna make things a lot harder and you may be able to understand it perfectly fine because that's the, your that's your style but when you leave that job and you go to another job you don't take the code with you okay the code stays behind and then the next person that sits down in your chair is going to have to pick that up from you and it's going to be a horrible experience for him okay so just please make sure that your code is properly indented and it's, it's looking neat and organized so it's easy for readability so anyone can understand what you're doing and especially when you have to do code review with other developers that so you have to send them your code so they can review it and they send you their code so you can review it you know it makes everything a lot easier and if you ever decide to move into Python trust me <clears throat> you're gonna need indentation because that's the only way that Python works okay if you don't indent correctly it just doesn't compile so do yourself a favor make it so that it's properly indented prettier will help you but do it anyway okay so that's all I'm really going to touch as far as uh, these extensions um, I know I'm running a little long already on this so before I go away I do want to touch a couple of other websites that you need to um, download some stuff that we're gonna use and that's going to be your or your framework your front-end framework okay so you're gonna type in bootstrap it's already there and go to getbootstrap.com um, I'm not gonna spend too much time on this right now because <clears throat> this uh, this video is getting a little too long right now so all you need to do is just go here click on the get started don't download it you don't need to do that uh, not for this tutorial go into get started and make sure that you have this open because eventually we will be able to use this okay as well as this right here and then the other one is going to be font awesome and this one used to be a lot easier to just get a link like that not anymore now they actually want you to log in and create an account which is fine you, sh you should do it 
and they will create a kit for you so when they create a kit for you you'll be able to access it from here from you know start and then you'll be able to create and use this kit and that will, it will be there and then this is how you eventually can come to the icons part here and look for an icon that you want to use say I want to use this card here and then your code will be here for the card that you want to use so all of this stuff will come um, you know helpful later on so that's all I'm gonna be touching for right now um, I don't want to go any longer on this uh, this is just basically to set you up completely and in, in the next video we're gonna talk about we're gonna actually get started and create um, the application okay starting from creating your what files you're going to need and what folders you're going to need the correct way to organize your root for your folders and your files and all that good stuff all right so don't forget to subscribe if you're helping uh, I mean if, if you're learning so far and um, and just uh, you know just give me a like whatever you want and um, you know just stick stick around all right